Hey guys, my name is Matthew Pfeiffer. I'm with mattpfeiffercoaching.com and this is uh, my YouTube channel where I answer questions in related to narcissism. Uh, in particular, if you are dealing with narcissistic ex or narcissistic family members, uh, anything narcissism related, I answer all of your questions uh, right here on the YouTube channel for free. And you can, uh, if you have a question that you would like for me to answer right here on the YouTube channel, just go to just ask Matt at mattpfeiffercoaching.com and I'll answer your questions uh, um, right here. Uh, I try to upload a new video um, every weekday. Uh, just ask Matt at mattpfeiffercoaching.com or if you'd like to book a session with me, uh, mattpfeiffercoaching.com. And uh, so make sure you hit the subscribe, the subscribe notification and the bell notification so you're aware of whenever I upload new videos. Uh, so without any further ado, I'm going to uh, answer a listener's question and it goes, uh, my name is, obviously I'm not going to share with you the person's name uh, just for confidentiality reasons, but uh, I currently just out, got out of a four and a half year narcissistically abusive relationship. I've gone minimal contact, which is what I encourage people to do whenever they do have children. Uh, I call it low contact. So no contact when you uh, don't have any kids and you go low contact uh, or minimal contact when you do have kids. Um, and this person has a three-year-old, uh, a two-year-old who is autistic and a seven-year-old. Uh, and she says that they have the raw deal of having to deal with, of having to talk to their narcissistic dad. My older two don't want to talk to him when he calls. I feel horrible when I tell them uh, that they need to, to talk to their dad. Uh, I am also afraid that he would use it against me in court if I told the kids they didn't have to talk to him. What can I do? This is very common. Uh, here is what happens is that obviously your kids are, they may not be able to articulate it, but they're starting to see and they're starting to become more aware of how their dad uh, how their dad is they don't feel comfortable with him right on one hand this is a good thing because you in this scenario you have become what's called the protective parent right when they're with you they feel free when they're with dad when they're talking to dad in this situation it, this also could be in reverse a lot there's also a lot of narcissistic mothers out there they don't feel comfortable so what you want to do in this type of situation, because you also do need to protect yourself in the event that he does take you back to court. Now, I encourage people to not be fearful of court, right? If he takes you back, he just takes you back. He could do it at any point in time, vice versa, right? There's nothing you can do to stop them from taking you back to court. However, you want to do things to make sure that you protect your rights, that you're doing things according to the decree. So what you want to do is you actually want to, you do want to encourage your kids to talk on the phone because you need to be compliant with your court order. And if your kids do not want to talk to them, talk to him, you need to encourage and you need to empower your children to tell him. What this does, and as uncomfortable as this is for the kids, and it's probably going to be uncomfortable for you, is that it actually shows them and it teaches them to set boundaries with this gentleman. And uh, sorry, the lights are going off. Let me get these lights back on. So what, what this will do is that uh, this will empower your kids to set boundaries with their dad, with their narcissistic uh, father. If he takes you back to court, you simply document all the times that you have encouraged them to be on the phone that you that they did get on the phone and that they explained to their dad that he uh, that they did not want to talk to him, um, and then you take it up with courts from there. Maybe these phone calls um, end right because uh, you're able to document, you're able to show your lawyer, and and I and I would also encourage you to have a conversation with your lawyer to make sure that the documentation uh, is written out correctly in a way, right that you can. Uh, that the that your lawyer is is uh, able to protect you and able to um, you know advocate for you and those sorts of things and so that is how um, these type of situations need to be handled you want to empower your children you also want to take the opportunity to um, to validate your children's feelings and you want to talk to them about the reasons why they uh, feel uncomfortable with him 
right? Uh, what is it that your dad says that you know makes you feel uncomfortable? If he's calling them names, if he's uh, saying different things, you want to validate their feelings because um, what happens is that when uh, kids, when when children's feelings are not validated when they're young, they grow up like a blank check, like their feelings don't matter, right? And that they have to sacrifice their feelings for. Uh, the needs of others and so you want to make sure that they know and they feel like their feelings and their emotions are important right and you want to process these feelings you want to process these emotions you know if they come back and they say you know uh, dad was calling me names dad was being very critical you want to say things like i'm sure that didn't feel very good right and that's true right? you're not talking bad about the dad you don't want to do that but you do want to validate your kids feelings i'm sure that really hurt when you said that i'm sure that really uh, that didn't feel so good when he said those things to you. And if they begin to cry, you allow for them to cry. You want to be there for them. You want to console them. Um, but you want to validate feelings, right? And you want them to be able to express themselves freely with you, right? Those are, those are sorts of things that they are not able to do with the narcissistic parent, right? They're not able to express themselves freely. They're not able to be themselves. When they're, when you have a narcissistic parent, you have to play a certain role with that narcissistic parent. And when you don't, there's consequences that uh, that are had with criticism, with name calling, uh, with verbal and emotional abuse. And so uh, with you, you want them to be able to express themselves freely without paying any type of consequence. So thank you for writing in. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, if you have questions that you would like for me to answer right here on uh, my YouTube channel, go to Just Ask Matt. Email me any questions. You want to keep the, the questions very brief, two to three paragraphs max. Be very direct about the questions that you have. And I would love to answer the, any questions that you guys have. And I will talk to you soon.